And welcome everyone to a little Andy Katz chat here for the Pac-12 with Mick Cronin, the head coach of the UCLA Bruins. And Mick, you've had a, a good chance now to get well adjusted. You had the spring, the summer, now into the early fall, getting ready to tip off against Long Beach State for the opener. In what way have you been able to put your imprint on this UCLA program so far? Well, we'll see about that. I, I, I you know, on the court as a coach, probably it, it, I won't be happy for a couple of years as far as having the guys just used to what I expect of them from a style of play standpoint. Uh, just from how we practice to how we warm up, how we treat each other, uh, it just takes time. I keep trying to tell myself that because I want it done yesterday. Like you said, we got a game. We play Long Beach State. And, you know, it's 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 just a, a time where you, you have to let them play games. You know, it, it, the process of what I could do in the first five or six months with my staff and the players, everybody's tried really hard. But until you uh, put it all together and you put the product out there, you really you got to hit. a We've hit a point where you can't progress until we play games. And that's learning how to win and all the things you try to teach your guys and what you expect of them. So I think all, all coaches right now, unless you have returning players and, and, you know, five guys, like maybe Tom Izzo feels confident right now. I don't know. But those of us with new jobs or you have a lot of new players like Dan Munson does at Long Beach, you're, you're, you're a little apprehensive about what's going to happen in the opener. Mick, every time we watch the Mick Cronin coach team at Cincinnati, or even before that, uh, we always knew that the team was going to defend. They were going to basically fight down to the last possession. They were going to grind. They were going to be tough. Those kind of characteristics. Uh, how close are you to at least getting some of that here at the beginning of the season for UCLA? Well, you're going to see us compete, and there's no question about that. Now, at what level are you going to compete, and who are you competing against? So that that's where the growth will have to be throughout the season. And and really, Andy, the, the great teams. Yeah, I think when two teams play a forty minute game, and even in a game where a team loses by twenty, they compete. But it, at some point, though, the the onslaught happens. You know, so can you hang in there for forty minutes and impose your will upon your opponent? That's what we're practicing. Can we hang in there? trade punches with the best of the best, and, and come out with with a victory. So it, it doesn't mean it's a it, – I think sometimes, you know, fans here, well, you know, they, they don't play. No, you do, but but can you impose your will for 40 minutes, and then can you do it for an entire season? And those are the teams you see in the title game, or last year's championship game. Those teams impose their will the entire season on their opponents. So we're practicing that. I think, like I said, it, it'd be foolish for me to think that we're ready to do that for 40 minutes every night. But hopefully, you know, through through trying to get there, that's our goal, that we'll learn. And once we get there, then we'll have our culture built. All right, so a couple of players I just, I'm interested to hear your opinion on. First, Tiger Campbell, who did not play last season, uh, had a good exhibition. I know it's just an exhibition, but what were your early impressions from Tiger out there as a lead guard, uh, really a new look for you, for him, and and for the fans, because they didn't get a chance to see him last season. Well, I, he's really good with the ball. I think, you know, especially in today's game, you know, I'd like to have three of him. <laughs> so you, you got guys who can make plays. You know, in today's game, you got to spread the floor. you got to have some guys who can beat their man. Uh, it, it's hard to out-coach your opponent, whether uh, he's at Stanislaw State or he's at Long Beach State. And whomever you're coaching against, you know, they have game plans. And you got to have players that break down the other team's defense, whether it's a made shot, penetration, and, and a basket, or penetration and creating a shot for a teammate. Uh, the more of those guys you have, the better offense you're going to have. So he, he, you got to have some initiators, is what I'm saying. He's an offensive initiator. He can finish as well, though. So I just keep telling myself, he's a freshman. I keep telling myself, you know, he's a freshman. So, you know, we, we've we, you got to keep coaching him, helping him. When you have a young point guard, you really have to help him as a coach, try to simplify things. So we tried to, as a coaching staff, figure out ways we can, at times, put it in his hands so he can take over. At other times, make it easy on him uh, where he doesn't have to have the ball initiating every play for 40 minutes. Because I think that's asking too much and not a wearing down. Sharif O'Neal is another player. Medically could not compete last season, so UCLA fans didn't see him last season. He's also new for you as a head coach. What have you thought so far? 
Well, I think Sharif's got the best attitude uh, of anybody I've coached in a long time. And I've had some great kids. And, and he reminds me a lot of Trey Scott that I coached at Cincinnati. Just a wonderful attitude, great person. He wants to learn. The, the, the advantage probably that he has that, that, that other guys don't have is he's got a dad that tells him, hey, you need to learn. Like, you know, you basketball is a lot more. You're not that good. You know, versus other kids, you know, you know maybe their parents don't know how great they are. His dad, you know, he, he, he's not that good compared to his dad. So he, he, he's a sponge. So that helps. His attitude's off the charts. So just getting him comfortable, Andy. He, you know, he's a tall kid. He's grown a few inches since he's been here. So he's 6'9 or so. Uh, and, and getting his comfort zone out there on the court and getting him, just like all young guys, getting him to take his time. But uh, I think the big thing's been probably the last two months, he's gotten in great shape where he's able to compete because, you know, he laid in bed for a long time. And uh, when I first got here, I mean, he was extremely out of shape. Uh, and it was just a mental process for him working back because his heart is fine. So it's just been a mental process and the physical process of getting back in shape. Yeah, best thing is he's healthy and he's able to play basketball again. I mean, these were things that, you know, we couldn't necessarily take for granted a year ago. All right, the one returning player I'm interested in to hear your opinion on is Prince Ellie. Uh, obviously, um, you know, a lot of expectations with him. Uh, where does he stand right now as we get ready for the season? Yeah, I think we, Prince and Alex Olshinsky, two yep. guys are going to play a big role for us. You know, we, we're a very young team, so we don't have a guys that are average over 20 minutes a game. So we, we need some, some, what I call some soldier time out of those guys. You don't have to be great. What, what we need you to do is be somebody we can count on to not make mistakes. We need somebody to count on to take care of the ball, get in the right spot, get your teammates in the right spot. So that, that's what veterans do. So I, we need veteran play from those guys. They can do some things. Probably Prince has got talent. Alex can make some shots when he's healthy. So I think he's been a guy that's uh, he's been an enigma of his career. He's had so many injuries. People never he, – he's become the forgotten man. So uh, he, he's been healthy for us. So I think they're both really going to help us. But we, we just need those guys to not make mistakes because we're so young in all the other areas. That the young guys are going, going to make mistakes. So as a coach, you got to figure out, hey, Prince, I, I got to count on you to not make any and, and just be somebody I can count on, especially at crunch time when games are on the line. And lastly, Mick, you're the UCLA coach, okay? Yes, sir. Regardless of what's happening yeah. in this program, uh, UCLA, those four letters mean something historically. It's iconic. What's it going to be like to walk out on that floor in a real game as the UCLA men's basketball coach at Poly Pavilion? Oh, it's a great honor. I mean, you know, I talked to uh, Coach Wooden's son, Jim, called him last week, told him how much I was looking forward to it. Uh, he's a very nice man, by the way. He's smart, too. He lives down in Orange County where it's awesome. But, uh, yeah, it's a great responsibility, obviously, to sit where Coach Wooden sat. But there's a lot of guys still alive that were unbelievable basketball players that won championships at UCLA, uh, got guys that are on television from, you know, Reggie Miller, uh, to Ryan Hollins, Matt Barnes, and these guys are all on TV. I mean, you get some great, great players, and obviously the multiple, I think, 15 guys in the NBA right now. So a lot of responsibility, but uh, at the end of the day, I, you, you, you don't complicate things. You know, my, our job, you obviously want to be successful. I'm a competitor. You keep it about the kids in your locker room and, and showing them what they need to do to be who they want to become, and just focus on that. I mean, if you focus on anything outside of that, you, you'll take your eye off the ball, and it becomes overwhelming, I think. So I have a lot of experience with it. I had to follow Coach Huggins, and, and he's a legend in Cincinnati. Appreciate it, Mick. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. It's good to talk to you.